<laughs> okay. Yeah. So the next speaker is uh, uh, Frederick Agard. Let's just say that. Who is <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about unifying cubicle and multimodal structure? Yes. Thank you. Um, yes, I'd like to talk about the uh, yeah, cubicle and multimodal type theory. This is joint work with uh, Manus Kastensen, uh, Daniel Greitzer, and Lars Birkedal. Um, so, as the name suggests, this is about uh, combining cubicle type theory and multimodal type theory, two things we've already heard a bit about. Um, uh, I'll start by talking a bit about those, and I'll talk about how we combine them. Um, so, multimodal type theory, which we just heard a lot about. Um, this is the, well, this is the dependently typed version. Uh, uh, as we talked about, general modal type theory, so it can uh, fit many modal situations, uh, parameterized by a mode theory, uh, which, as we have also talked about, uh, is a, a, a two category. Um, the objects are modes, each mode uh, we can think of as a uh, copy of a uh, Martin Luff type theory, and the one morphisms are modalities. Um, example, uh, here is uh, uh, this mode theory, which we uh, one may recognize uh, the equations as that of an adjunction. And this mode theory specifies the modal situation of having two adjoint modalities. Um, and this is the only time we will care about two cells. Uh, so we can just think about them as one categories. Uh, otherwise, um, well, yeah, part of the advantage of working such a general mode theory is also that, well, we can prove meta theorems about it, and, we, and these meta theorems are then true in many different modal situations. Um, uh, we've also discussed, uh, discussed this briefly before. Um, so we have, uh, well, we have an operation. Uh, on contexts called logging and an operation on types, which is really the true modality, um, and these can be thought of as being adjoints in some way. Um, that was briefly MTT. A uh, cubicle type theory, uh, extension of Martin Luther type theory in a different direction, it adds a, some strong extensionality principles, including univalence. Um, so, uh, Weekly, what we have add to it, we well, what I think cubicle type theory, we have inter interval terms and variables. Um, so the interval we think of as well the interval, endpoints uh, uh, zero and one, and other things. Uh, we can make variables of them, uh, and using this, we uh, define we can define path types. Um, so each uh, so well yeah, these uh, replace identity types. A path between two points. Is really just a function from the ident from the interval into that type that uh, matches on the endpoints. Um, there we also have some we call uh, some phases and uh, phase restrictions. So, uh, well, uh, phases are built from uh, these uh, well built really built propositions uh, that some interval term is zero and then built from those using conjunction and disjunction, um, and we can restrict the context. Uh, corresponding to well, assuming the proposition. Um, uh, so uh, uh, one last thing we need uh, to talk about in cubicle type theory is the uh, composition operation. Uh, because as we have uh, because, uh, the path types, as we've seen thus far, don't really behave like identity types. Uh, in particular, they're not, they're, they're not transitive. Um, uh, and that is what the composition operation is for, uh, amongst other things. Uh, so uh, the uh, composition operation tells us that if we have <coughs> two, uh, if we, no, if we have a path in some restricted context, and that path can be uh, extended, I don't know, though, one endpoint can be extended to the unrestricted context, then the other endpoint can also be extended. Um, it turns out many nice things follow from this. Um, uh, importantly, we need a computation rule for every type. Uh, for example, there's a computation rule saying that the composition of a pair is a pair of compositions. Um, this will be important later. 
Now, finally, we come to a cubical multimodal type theory, uh, which is the combination of MTT and CTT. Uh, it's a general modal type theory like MTT, whilst having the strong extensionality principles of CTT. Uh, so, then it's parameterized by a mode theory, uh, but now each mode uh, contains a copy of CTT instead of Martin Lift type theory. Um, the question then is, how should modal and cubical aspects interact with each other? Uh, of particular importance, we need a computation rule for composition in modal types. Um, uh, and uh, and with, what, with what we have here, trying to uh, write that rule is not going to lead to a well-type rule. Um, our solution to this is what we call the principle of orthogonality. Uh, saying that modal and cubical aspects should interfere minimally with each other. They should be orthogonal. Um, the way we implement this principle with the rules uh, is through exchange <coughs> principles. Uh, first, we have exchange operations. Uh, they tell us that if we have an interval term in some context and we'll unlock the context, we can bring the interval term with us. This crucially is not, a, there's no inverse to this operation. Um, it turns out that adding an inverse, whilst that seems, whilst adding an inverse seems to fit with the orthogonality principle, it invalidates a lot of models that we would like to be models. Um, so this is only a one-ray operation. Uh, we also have exchange substitutions. These are, in fact, inverses. This one tells us that we, have a, that we can exchange locks and interval variables. Um, and we have similar rules for phases and phase restrictions. The consequence of these, first, the computation rule for composition modal types is now well typed. And secondly, uh, we, have, we get a new extensionality principle, uh, modal extensionality. Um, uh, something which is not true in a uh, base MTT, uh, but is now true in a cubical MTT. Um, as for models, we have the, well, we, have the, we can make pre-shift models quite easily. Uh, so we want to make a model over some mode M. Uh, we need a strict two functor F. Um, and there then are really two choices for how to do it. Uh, we can, uh, well, no matter what, uh, each mode will be modeled as the pre-sheaves on f of n product uh, the cube category, the, the Morgan cube category. Um, and we then have two choices. We can either model each modality uh, using, uh, the, using the junction given by right can extension and pre-composition, the upper one, or we can uh, model it using the a junction between pre-composition and left can extension, the, the bottom one. Um, we need to make the same choice everywhere. We can't mix the two. Um, and there's the slight caveat in the bottom case that first, because of some strictification issues, that is only going to, this is only going to be true up to equivalence. Um, and uh, the bottom one is also only possible if each left can extension is lex. Um, Yes, uh, well, uh, many more details are available in our paper on archive, also including application of this in guarded recursion. Uh, thank you. Did you get as far as uh, thinking about how what the implication would be to implement this uh, fusion, right? Uh, let's see. Um, currently, we're, there's still not an implication and an implementation of of uh, MTT, so they, and this was going to be a further challenge. Like we have, don't have we don't have a proof of normalization yet. We conjecture normalization, but mm -hmm. we don't have a proof of this yet. Uh, so, it, and implementation is still far away. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? How hard would it be to prove normalization? Um, 
that's a good question. Um, we have normalization both for MTT and cubicle type theory. Uh, both uh, use uh, synthetic Tate computability. Uh, so there's a hope that that uh, that can be, will be can be used again, and it won't be too much more than combining the two. Um, we don't know. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah. There are other applications in the... Just in pure modal, uh, multimodal type theory, there are other applications as well in these papers. How, how difficult is it to port, to port these uh, applications from the multimodal case to the cubicle, to the new cubicle? Um, in general, not difficult. Uh, the, the, uh, I mean, porting them is syntactically not a problem. Semantically, the models are more restricted here. Uh, in, the, in just MTT, these two cases can be mixed. So some modality is modeled by, uh, uh, by the upper case, some modality is modeled by the lower case. We can't mix them here. Uh, and it seems very, I doubt it's possible. And if it's possible, it's very difficult. Uh, so some, uh, so it's some, semantically, not everything is going to port from MTT. Um, but syntactically, I think everything just ports perfectly well. So, so are the examples in, in MTT, are they not on this form here for a particular choice or consistent choice of uh, either I the think there's the some. I, I think there's some, uh, I think the examples in the MTT paper uh, are all of this form, uh, all fit. But I, I think there's some uh, use of this in axiomatic cohesion that, like, that wants to mix them. Uh, okay. And that's allowed in MTT, but not here. Right, okay. Thanks. 